For more on Tesla's annual meeting, let's bring in Fast Money friend Gene Munster, partner at Loop. Gene, good to have you with us. Um, what's your number one question going into this meeting? And do you think that you'll get an answer? Uh, I think it will be answered. My number one question is when is Cybertruck coming out? As a quick refresher, pickup trucks account for 20% of U.S. sales. I don't know what it is globally. This is a big market. It has been delayed. That's my number one question. And if I can uh, take a little bit more here. And my number two uh, question is around Model 2. This is their $25,000 uh, uh, car that they've, they've teased at coming out. It is tough to build a car, to purchase a new car for $25,000, and they're going to try to do that. And I think when you put those two together, get a better sense of what's going on with Cybertruck and Model 2 in combination with their current lineup, which obviously is growing 100% faster than the rest of auto, you can start to build a case where this uh, company can deliver on its goal. They started out the the analyst day here or the uh, shareholder meeting mm -hmm. by kind of reiterating their goal of, uh, of 20 million vehicles. And so you can see how you can get there. How do you view Tesla's goals, Gene? Um, and, and those two data points when it comes to uh, the Cybertruck as well as the, the lower cost car. Um, in light of GM's bold uh, target raises from yesterday and also Ford's big plan, particularly for the F-150, it seems that its competitors mm -hmm. are really um, going gung-ho on EVs, and this has got to, I would imagine, even at the margins, impact how you view Tesla and its market share, you know, by 2030, let's say. Getting to the core question around sustainability of this massive growth and this potential that they can grow at 50% compound for the next 10 years, which they talk about, but I just want to quickly put GM's comments into perspective. They've had a two-day, as, as you mentioned, analyst day. They talked about doing uh, about 90 billion in EV revenue at the end of the decade. So nine years from now, 90 billion. Uh, Tesla, by my math, should be around 700 billion in uh, EV revenue at that point. Uh, in other words, is that uh, if you take uh, uh, GM's guidance and say that they're gonna achieve that guidance, their electric business will be 15% of the size of what Tesla says their electric business can be. They're all estimates, so the proof is in the pudding, but uh, I would just say that uh, as uh, a company that has been around for a long time, General Motors, understand their excitement around being a platform company, EV, robo-taxis, that is all good to hear, but the substance of the targets fall well short, and uh, the bottom line is that they're going to be losing market share in the new EV world. Gene, for a long time, we had to sort of sit and watch to see if Elon Musk was going to say, tweet, do something that could um, have a detrimental impact on the stock. It seems as though we're well past that. As a matter of fact, I would submit it looks like he's really grown into the job of CEO. Is mm -hmm. that an observation you share? And quite frankly, if it is, you know, I think this stock is poised to take out the all-time highs we made at that $900 level or so. I mean, I'm always reluctant to try to predict what Elon's going to do, but you are accurate. They've, he's been uh, more CEO-like. Uh, I think he's still kind of maintained his, his personality, too. I do question how long he wants to do this job. I suspect it's probably for five more years and uh, maybe two more years as CEO, three more years, and then probably go to a chairman role. I think space and Mars is, is more compelling to him. Uh, but uh, I want to just quickly uh, get to the, the point about a breakout here is that it's hard to predict a breakout when you've had the kind of performance that Tesla stock has had. But when you put the pieces together around their current business, how they're gaining share around what the future products are, you, you can build a case that this can be a much bigger company. Gene, great to get your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Gene Munster of Loop. And we've talked about this before in terms of really competing. And when you're talking about one of the best selling vehicles in the United States and around the world, the F Ford F-150, Tim, it would seem that getting a cyber truck that is really competitive would be key to keeping its market share in that particular segment. And then getting that Model 2 car out is going to be key to it maintaining its more than 60 percent market share as well. You would think so, but but again, you know the 241,000. The deliveries have been so extraordinary, and and the ramping, you you have to give credit. And so, to the extent that that I, you know, again, the EV opportunity, everybody understands that, and it really is right now. I think a scaling issue, which um, you know Tesla has to has to 
still get further down the road, even though uh, major, major victories. Uh, by the way, you have to point out also that the, the stock has been a bedrock of stability during a volatile market. I mean, it's almost extraordinary when you when you look at, at just how unvolatile or, 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 or really kind of benign the price movements have been in Tesla or in the month of September when the rest of the market has been having a very difficult time. Look, I don't change my tune on the multiple and not a buyer of Tesla at these levels. And even if you put a five dollar EPS on 2022, which I think is is you know, not aggressive, but it shows, you know, a lot more profitability than they had yesterday. It's still 155 times number. And I, I think they will lose market share. So again, I think this is as good as it gets in terms of the competitive landscape being behind them. And I think they're closing fast. Dan, just quickly, in terms of the relative outperformance, and you've pointed this out when it comes to Tesla in the ARC Innovation Fund relative to the rest of the components there, which are supposedly growthier, cutting edge kinds of companies. And Tesla's really held up. Do you buy the thesis that Guy's putting forth that part of this might be that Elon Musk has got a muzzle on, so to speak? I mean, he, he's actually acting like a grown-up CEO. I mean, aside from the Shiba Inu tweets, et cetera, um, you know, he's, he's relatively stayed these days. Well, he, it's not only that he's stayed. He, he's actually growing into that genius that everyone says that he is. I saw him at Code last week with Kara Swisher. I mean, he's very deliberate about a lot of things that he says. And I think Gene also mentioned the fact that He's focused on Mars. And when you talk to him, and it's not just a Tesla conversation, you see, I mean, they're sending satellites and they're returning the rocket ships and they're sending man, you know, I mean, they're doing big, big things. So I think he kind of gets really where he needs to be for a guy who's going to have a trillion dollar market cap company in Tesla in the not so distant future, probably. And then you tell me, what's the TAM on a SpaceX? I mean, it's is it trillions? You know what I mean? So. I don't know. Maybe he won. Elon, you know, for for you know, like ruler of the uh, of the galaxy. I mean, at this point, Ming the Merciless. You know, I mean, it's him. He won. We're done. <laughs>